yummers. Tequila! Yet another very romantic trip for Will and Jess, eh? We're in Paris. Hey, I'm Jesse. Behind the camera is Will, and together we are Top Jewel. Over the next 48 hours, we are going to film our alternative guide to Paris. Oh, and by the way, I need to apologise for the quite horrific French accent that I'm going to proceed to do over the next two days. Woo! It's cold, bought a big coat. Go drop bags at the hotel and then on to breakfast time. Yeah, this place is amazing. It's 172 rooms in the centre of Paris. This place is mammoth. Quick stop off at the Hoxton. We dropped our bags here. We had a little tour around. This place is beyond impressive, but I'm so hungry, Will. Let's get some proper French pastries. Apparently, they do this like pistachio Danish, which sounds just awesome. Pastry time! This is what we've come to see, owned by Christophe Vasseur. They're making bread like they did 100 years ago. Dough resting for like two days, everything cooked in a wood oven. This has been recommended to us by Maxime, owner of Blanchette. We featured them before in Top Jaw. It's like one of the best French restaurants in London. Carl Will, you smell already. Get your schnoz in here. Mate, I just want it all, but we've got to pace ourselves. The worst thing about this place is the anxiety you have about choosing yeah. a dish. <laughs> Chasson pour foche. She's struggling to understand the thing. <laughs> I think my French did all right in there because nobody spoke back to me in English. This is an escargot with chocolate and pistachio. This is like an apple and cream puff, and this is an almond croissant. Can I go yet, Will? Yes, eat. Bon appetit. Mm. Yeah? Mm hmm. Thanks, Maxime, for the recommendation. Always trust a French man when he's recommending Parisian bakeries. Top draw, top tip. We got there late morning, no queue. Now it's near lunchtime, queuezilla. <laughs> I can't imagine that's a tip. Well, you, well, hear, you, heard, morning, you heard it here first. Yeah. Basically, it's a busy bakery, okay? And it's very, very good. Lac de Trion. Will, that's not the Arc de Triomphe. Will seems to think that every single arch you see in Paris is probably the Arc de Triomphe. We are in Lo Marie. This is Jacques Chenin, a very premium confectioner. Treating chocolate like it's a real high fashion product. Should we buy these for our friends at home? Yeah, okay. Let's see if they last for 48 hours, eh? Oh, thank you very much. I'm loving this. Oh, yeah. I've had a lot of mint flavored chocolate in my life, but not like that. You could taste so much fresh mint. This is their little jelly, mango flavor, no pectin, no gelatin, all vegan. This place opened September last year, so only been open about four months. Their donut collection changes about every three weeks. Some themes always stay constant, so that they always have a chocolate one, they always have a caramel one. We asked Frank what his two favorites were, he said creme brulee, and the chocolate banana one. A healthy start to the day. <laughs> Man, that chocolate banana, that's a top draw recommended, right? You think it's gonna be really dense because it's quite like a little stocky unit of a donut, but it's basically completely filled with banana cream. You heard it here first. Heard it first. I've got the rest of my cheese. No. You make yourself conscious when you come in close to the camera. This is Marché des Enfants Rouges. The reason why I got his name is because they used to be in the 16th century in the orphanage. They used to sit on the site. An uplifting note is that the food here is amazing. And you can do takeaway or you can sit in little stalls, kind of like a street food market and some like artisanal and organic products as well. This is me, this place is a gold mine of food. The crepes that this guy is serving up is like nothing I've ever seen. We've got Mr. Superhero here that looks just like it's out of Thor. I think we've become really accustomed to street food markets now. There's like loads in London, there's loads in pretty much every UK city, but this one is really, really worth coming to. Every single stand here, I'm like, I want that, I want that, I want that. Actually, don't want that, that looks like sick. I want to have a glass of wine and some cheese over there. Bonjour. Oh, does someone say cheese? Lunch on a Thursday. Lunch on a Thursday. Man, that is a lofty camembert. This is called the Mont d'Or. Special today. They have a very small menu, and I think they change quite a lot. The food here looks so much more high end than you'd expect in a market. Man, so far so good. You're hitting quite a lot of spots. I mean, we don't necessarily advise that you cram in as much as we do, but we're just here to try it all out. We're trying to find the best coffee place around. We heard that the fringe was the one. We're really worried about overloading on grub and having a bit of a lull. Coffee will start out when it will. We have a check chocolate and hazelnut like cookie, which again wasn't the plan, but looked like unavoidable. The guy in there said he thinks that there's a lot of parallels between coffee and photography because of the craft and the kind of the amount of precision that goes into it. Mate, I drink a lot of oat milk flat whites. That one. Dude, that's high up there. Look at that little juicy goddess right there. Chocolate chip, hazelnut cookie, warm, very soft, very goo. Kicking out. 
top-notch quoll like that, and one of the best oatmeal lattes I've ever had. Yeah. Respect a friend. We're in East Paris, just like in London, the East is the kind of younger, more fashion-y kind of district. We didn't realise, but we've timed our visit around Men's Fashion Week in Paris. So there's a lot of uh, fashionistas around. Are we fashionistas, Will? Started chucking it down in the rain. So we thought, well, as we're staying in the best hotel in Paris, let's come back here, have a couple of drinks, and make our plan for the evening. Second glass of wine today. We don't want Jesse to get a bit slurry, do we, Will? Mm -mm. This is the Reve Bar in Hoxton. Open to anyone, so you don't have to be staying here. You can just come in here and have a drink, or some food, or work. It's past 5 p.m. now, so we've moved on to the hard stuff. Here we have a truffle margarita. I like that a lot. This is the smallest room, it's called the shoebox in the Hoxton. It's ample, and it's sexy, isn't it, Will? As everything in the Hoxton, attention to detail is immense, and they have a little survival guide here, surrounding map. We've got a list of places. We're not gonna be able to make it to all of them tonight. We can do as many as we possibly can. Let's go get pizza, Will. Come on. We've heard about this big mama group that has lots of restaurants all over Paris, one of which is Pizzeria Populaire. So Pizzeria Populare, as now I've been told it's been said, and we call it Pizzeria Populare, <laughs> is basically a piece of Naples in Paris. It's very, very popular because it earns tables quickly, but it's really reasonably priced. Ah, thank you. Ah, ay, ay, ay. It's served in a wine glass with a blonde beer. So here I'm going to give you some of the ingredients. We have beef carpaccio, parmesan crisps here, a balsamic glaze, and then here we have our Regina Barretta. Again, we've got mushrooms, barretta on it, Ham, 15 euros and 15 euros. It's quite cheap for Paris. Paris is cheap. To be told, they're opening one in London. They can't tell me anything else apart from it's going to be opening in zone one. Everything was good? Everything was great, thank you very much. We've done our pizza, that's some good value, good value pizza, and now we're going on to Mabel. We're in Mabel. It is a rum empire. Will, this camera's going to be getting a lot more shaky from now on in, I think. We asked Joseph, master mixologist here, to pick some for us. He's given me this little bad boy. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. There are two different types of rum in here. One's from Jamaica. There's passion fruit, sesame, and rhubarb. It's kind of like a sweet and sour one. And Will has got one that is essentially rocket fuel that's going to put him into a different dimension. There are four different types of rum in here. And then the mixer is champagne. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Awesome rum cocktails. Very, very strong. Will, I don't think I've ever had a drink as, yeah, Will was a bit. <laughs> Next place we're going to is Baranan. Now, it looks like an Indian restaurant from the outside, but we're told that you go through inside and out through the back, and there's a little speakeasy cocktail bar. Sounds good. Is there a bar through there? Well, no, but uh, we have something special somewhere you can find. Okay. Okay, so that door was the box. This one is. Oh, look at this! Salut, comment ça va? Salut. Oh, it's all happening back here, isn't it? This setting is like in a train going through Mumbai. It's funny because like the the restaurant outside is super chill, and then here is an absolute bustle. This is the cocktail menu, a little passport. All of the cocktails are kind of Indian. There's like some sort of infusion or flavoring in there. And the food menu is like a train ticket. We ordered two hey honeys, some tandoori chicken, and we got a butter chicken serving there. Nice little Indian tapas. Well, if we're more hungry, we've got to more in on the dishes. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Next up, Lavamatic. Another speakeasy. We're quite liking this theme. Lavamatic is a like a laundrette. And apparently we've got to go through a washing machine to get into this little bar. He <laughs> saves the more a uh, sweet a bar. The entrance downstairs is fantastic. Full on laundrette scenario. He even has like a little dispensary detergent. Press a couple of buttons, walk through the washing machine, and then you're in here. We're back at the Hoxton Hotel. We've done a lot today. We've done like, I don't know, 10, 11 plates or something like that. Gonna hit the hay now, have a little nightcap in Hoxton, and then ready for full speed ahead tomorrow, because we've got another whole day to make use of, dude. Good night. Hey, my snoring doesn't keep you up. Oh, mate. So having a little day two planning sesh. We're using a little Hoxton map to plot out a few of our places today. I want to take Will down to Shakespeare and Company, which is this cool little bookshop down by Notre Dame in the Latin Quarter. Will loves a book, hey Will. Especially one with pictures in it. Little glass on here and we're off. Decent little panel as well. 
We're gonna go to Holly Belly. We're gonna have brunch. Just to remind you that you are in Paris, but get us just left around the places. Holy Belly 5. This place is quite a straight up brunch place. You know the drill, filter coffee. I prefer authentic. You feel like we should go more French. Yeah. As we're here, we might as well enjoy our pancakes. Okay, so here we have the savory stack. Not so savory because it also features a lot of maple syrup. They're pancakes, eggs, bacon. No, I'm not gonna lie, it's tasty. Not too sweet. Oh. oh. Let's call a spade a spade, right? That place is decent. It's a queue outside, it's always busy. Might be the most unFrench place you can go in Paris. We got served by one guy from Cambridge, another guy from Stratford. We are going to provide the antidote for that. I'm going to find the most French place we could possibly find, just to give you a balance. Roger Lagrenil, the most French restaurant you could possibly find, right? We were told by the guys that they don't get many tourists in here. This place first opened in like the 1930s, right? And apparently he was a real legend around town. Lots of creators in here, loads of parties, and it is renowned as one of the best places for frog's legs in all of France. It's called the Arrogant Frog. Cheers. What's up first, Jess? Snails, Will. It smells brilliant. It smells garlicky. It smells very nice. It's just garlic sea. Hmm. Kind of tastes like cockles or something. You know, like seafood, like little shellfish. We now have a croque monsieur. So in here they have the ham, both of cheese from Switzerland, bread which is absolutely cooked in loads and loads of butter. Give it a whirl. Oh, mega frog good. <laughs> that light and sweet, and you can taste the butter. And it's so crispy on the outside and soft in the middle. Okay, so this is the frog legs. It's like nuggets, he said. They retain just this bone only, so it acts like a big type of cocktail stick. So we have bearnaise sauce, wine sauce, and garlic aioli. The aioli. Mmm, kind of like a fishier texture than chicken. That aioli bangs in my mouth. These are frog legs served another way. There's little Freddy the Frog. A bit different to a Freddo, isn't it? <laughs> We wanted something super French. I've never had frog legs before. I've never had snails before. Roger La Grenille is the best place for this type of thing. We can't be very close to anybody from now on in because our mouths are garlic city. So in this guide, we weren't going to focus on many of the sort of obvious touristy spots, but Notre Dame is one of our faves and Will hasn't been inside. So try and keep that camera subtle because they won't like it. That's ridiculous. Imagine if I said to you, Oh yeah, I want to build this building. It's going to take me 700 years. Yeah, can you like just, just give me some debt on it? This is the centre Pompidou. It's the first example of an inside-out building. And since 1977, seen 180 million visitors. This is Shakespeare and Company. In 1922, an American called Sylvia Beach opened one up nearby. It closed down when the Germans occupied Paris. This one opened in 1951 and was originally called Le Mistral. They changed their name to Shakespeare and Company in tribute to Sylvia's original one and on Shakespeare's 400th birthday. And it helps out writers in giving them support and free lodging in return for help out in the shop. Oh, I think this one's about us, Will. It reminds me of like, um, like a shop from Diagon Alley, Harry Potter. The Louvre is home to the extremely famous Mona Lisa. It's the biggest art museum in the world at 782,000 square feet. And within a single year, 10.2 million visitors view this place. Quite impressive, eh? My farm's bigger than the Louvre. You, yeah, you got a big farm. It was essentially exhibiting art since like 1699 or something. I'm not going to get any more technical than that because I don't really know. Enough of this culture, let's go and stuff our faces. Yeah, Will's quite up for cheese. Mate, what a beautiful day. So we are in Kong. This place is actually an Asian restaurant. We've just come up here to check out the glass ceiling, look at the view. I've ordered espresso martini. Will's ordered a margarita. It's very posh Parisian. These cocktails are 17 euros each. It is a lot, Jeez. but it's only two euros more than it was over at Mabel last night. We're getting to the final stages now. This street is called Rue du Nil, and it is home to four places by the brand Frenchie. Very popular. We'll start with the first original one, the original Frenchie Bistro. Open on evenings for a very nice little sit down din. And then Frenchie Wine Bar. Open this evening, so we're not gonna be able to make it, but it's been here for five years and it's decent. And if you like the wines in there, you can get them in here in the Frenchie Wine Store. Yummers. And then the more casual, laid back daytime version, we have Frenchie to go. And that's the one we're going in. Heard the Ruben is amazing.
amazing! We've got pulled pork sandwich, a Reuben salt beef sandwich. Oh yeah. And you get a side, you get a beer or a soft drink, 17 euros. It's the same price that we paid for those cocktails over at Colin just now. Right, that's it. We hope you've enjoyed our four hours in Paris. I think a highlight for me was the croque monsieur from earlier today. Oh, the cheese at the market. The climbing through a washing machine at the bar last night. Let us know what you think. If we missed anywhere, let us know in the comments. If you go and see anywhere that we feature in this video, also let us know. We love the interaction we have with you guys. Most of this video has been based on recommendations that we've got through you from Instagram, so thanks a lot for that. Love you all, love you Will. We've had a good time, haven't we? Yes, mate. And the next one is going to be 48 hours in Bangkok. Slightly different to Paris. <laughs>